Good morning. Welcome to Truth for Today. This is Dai Qing Yuan, your host and teacher, pastor of Abilene Bible Church. Today we are continuing our study of I Pray. This is an ex- exposition of the Lord's Prayer. Now, I was baptized in the Methodist Church, stayed for two years there, and uh, till today I still miss the recitation of the Lord's Prayer and uh, the, um, the Apostles' Creed. And uh, these are great summaries of our faith. The Lord's Prayer is directly from our Lord's mouth, and uh, it, has, uh, it appears two places in the New Testament, one's in Matthew, one's in Luke. In Luke, it was explicitly uh, told that it was supposed to be a template for our prayers. So it's very instructional. And in Matthew, it was quoted as an illustration that we need to forgive in order to be forgiven, give mercy in order to receive further mercy after your salvation. Now, the Lord's Prayer has two dimensions. One is vertical dimension, one is horizontal. The vertical dimension uh, is about your relationship to God. And uh, it starts with one reminder, our Father. It tells us that our relationship to the Father, that He is our Heavenly Father and we are His sons or children. Now, this is the foundation of all of our petitions later. Without the Sonship in Christ, we will not have any right of giving the petitions later. Okay. So, after the reminder, there are seven petitions, three about God. We pray for God's name, God's kingdom, and God's will. And those are God's honor, God's interest, and uh, God's desire. If we focus on those, we will not fall under the temptation of our pride, greed, and flesh. Okay. Most of our prayers start from the second half, but well, that's something we need to correct. We've got to start from reflecting our relationship with God, and then pray for God, okay, for His name, kingdom, and honor. Okay, uh, uh, no name, kingdom, and uh, and will. So it's his honor, interest, and uh, uh, and desire. Okay, once that is done, then you can pray for ourselves. And uh, in the Lord's Prayer, it has four parts about us, about the horizontal dimension, about our bread, our debt, temptations, and uh, evil. So um, give us. Forgive us, lead us, and uh, deliver us. Okay. We are going to do the give us part today. Give us this day our daily bread. Okay. And now, of course, we see a big pattern. The bread is about a fleshly need. It's a fact of life. We are living in a physical body. Okay. God is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He made man Trinitarianly, we have the spirit, the soul, and the body. We have to have a body in order to live. So, we have a part of the flesh that is not necessarily evil or selfish even. It's just a fact of life. It's something that's necessary. And we do recognize that, and God recognizes that. It is legitimate to pray for daily bread. But What's behind this? Why are we putting this first? Well, because this is something that uh, we cannot live without. And it's legitimate to start from there. God being our Father, being our Creator, the one who put us into this flesh, but breathed into us the spirit and soul, He knows our need. Therefore, it is okay to pray for this. Okay. And the most of people's um, prayer are about um, bread, <laughs> and uh, or start from there. And uh, their attitude, however, is childish and demanding. Okay. And um, we remember um, in the Bible, Rachel told Jacob, give me children or I'll die. 
okay, Genesis 31. Now, that is a spoiled wife. Of course, she knows that she's beautiful, she's loved by her husband, but she's making unreasonable demand. It is not up to her husband to give her children. Her husband can love her and make love with her, but <laughs> it's not up to him to conceive, right? It is up to God. And this kind of demanding attitude is not pleasing to God, okay? Mm, when you pray to God, give me bread or I die. Well, actually, you don't need the physical bread until up to 40 days. You can fast and pray for 40 days um, without any substantial damage. And I've done that. So, give me bread or I die. Well, that is unnecessary threat, okay? And uh, um, it's not recognizing how much God has put into us the resilience you know, to pain and suffering and to difficulties for the purpose of using those to train us, okay? And uh, train us to be better characters. The truth is that without the physical bread, we can live for quite a few days. But without the bread from heaven, we will die. Without the manna from heaven, Israel would have died in the desert. Without our bread from heaven, Jesus Christ, okay, whose blood we drink, whose flesh we eat, symbolically, in the Lord's Supper. Without him, we will die die of the, the, the most horrible death. And there are three deaths. There's physical death, there's spiritual death, and there's eternal death. The physical death actually is just a departure of the soul from the body. The spiritual death is a departure of the soul from God. Most people who don't know God, they are already spiritually dead. They're just waiting for physical death, then they will have the eternal death, which is a resurrected body, soul, and spirit together, separated from God forever. That kind of death is the most horrible one. And uh, without the bread from heaven, we will die of that. So, because of that, when we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Pray for our bread. Okay? We need to mind our attitude. Okay. It's legitimate. It's totally legitimate to pray for your bread because God knows. He put us into this body and it is advantageous to have a body. Without a body, you can't imprint history. Okay? God put a time here from beginning to the end. It's called the flow. It's called history. And you can make an imprint into the history with a body. You can do things. Without a body, you can't do things. And that's why demons want to get into people's body, because they want to do things. They, but um, while it is legitimate, the attitude is the essence. Okay? And when you pray for your bread, you need to deal with four things issues. Believe, love, trust, and peace. Okay. Um, the correct attitude in prayer is that, first of all, you believe. Okay. You believe that God provides, that God loves you, that you are a child of God. He created you in His image, and He will take care of you as long as you recognize him as your father. Okay? And when you believe that you should, not, um, you should not pest God with your prayers, like the pagans pay, uh, praying to the idols, they do repetitions of words, you know, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, you know, and uh, that, that is pesting. Okay? And uh, they think that their gods, um, who are kind of like humans, because they didn't make their gods in their image. Okay? True God made humans in His image. False gods are made in human image. So they think their gods are just like them. If they are pested long enough, they'll lose their patience and say, okay, okay, okay take it. You know, uh, <laughs> 
that is not our God. Our God has patience. Okay, you cannot pest him to death. You cannot push him to the corner. You cannot、uh, hijack him for a decision for us. Okay, so you believe our God as a true, sovereign, loving Father. Okay, and then you don't pest him like pagans do, and you also you don't、uh, you shouldn't be like the hypocrites who show off their self righteousness. They think they earn it. They deserve it. I have done so well. Then now I should get this right. You know, I bought it with my work. You know, that is putting the relationship with God into a deal, into a business, just like the pagans do. You know, supposedly the hypocrites, the Pharisaic、uh, Judaism, and、uh, they they have some merits. Okay, they they behave well. In order to earn something from God, the behave behaving well is good, but to think that that will earn them something from God, and that's wrong. Okay, N- nobody deserves anything from God. Okay, the only thing you deserve is、uh, the punishment for your sin. Okay, if you have no sin, yeah, you deserve. God's love, but when you have the sinful nature in you, that you, ever since Adam and Eve, Satan have seeded into their descendants his nature, the sinful nature which lives in our flesh, and we are sons of Satan. And do you think we still deserve God's love and care and provision? No, we don't deserve anything except. The punishment first. So, when you trusted in Jesus, the punishment was done on the cross. Then justice issue is removed. Now love and care comes in. Okay. So we should not be like the hypocrites, thinking that they deserve、uh, something, and、uh, that kind of self-righteous attitude is not allowed. And、uh, we should not hold on, but should remove barriers to blessings. God, in His nature, He is a loving Father. He did create us into His,、uh, with His image or in His image, and even if Satan inserted into us His、uh, nature, the sinful nature, but God st- still sees the remnant of His image into、uh, in us. And if you are a child of God now through Christ by identifying with Him, then. God, in His heart, He has a soft spot. He wants to bless us. He wants to pour down His love. However, when even when we are believers, if we have sin, if we hold on to the sin, if we don't confess, then there is a barrier. The blessing is held up, and it cannot pour down. That's why, if you're really a believer, you believe you should let go your sin. You confess. And let go, and then remove the barrier. Then the blessings can come down. So that's the first issue in the correct attitude of prayer: believe. Okay. The second issue is to love. You must know that God is a loving yet sovereign Father. Yes, He loves you. He is your Father, and He wants the best of you. And he will take care of you and provide for you until you reach that goal. He has given his best for us, his eternal son. Right? He let his eternal son become a man in the flesh, and、uh, he was a man without sin who did not deserve death. But God put him on the cross and suffered the most horrible kind of death because of our need of a redeemer. A replacement for our sin, and、uh, either we die to pay for our sin, or someone else die to pay for our sin. He did die; Jesus did die to pay for our sins, for all people's sins. But the gift was wrapped in the package, but not everybody loved that package. Will open it. God's elect, however, will treasure it and open it and、uh, love it and live. By it, so if you love God, 
you must know that God in his nature is a loving father. However, since he is the father, he is the head of the house. He is sovereign. He is the head of the household of God, which is the whole universe plus the angels. So it's the universe, the physical universe. You know, universe really means uh, unity and diversity. It actually is composed of space and time. But even beyond space and time, see, angels live in time, but not in space. They live in the heavens and in the air. So um, the household of God includes humans and the angels and the universe. So it's every created being. God is the head of the house. He is sovereign. He makes decisions. You can't push him. Okay? You can't bend him. You can't twist him. Okay? Now you can pest him, but he won't budge. Okay? And uh, he is loving and he is sovereign. You must recognize both sides. Then your love for God would be correct form of love. Okay? Otherwise, it's puppy love. You know, it's a uh, Kiddish love, and uh, it's self-centered love. Okay, so you love God, include in uh, recognizing He is God. Let Him be God, and when you love God, you pray for His name, kingdom, and will first before you pray for your bread, debt, and no temptation. Okay, so. Uh, you, if you love your father, you want him to be honored and respected, okay? And you want his uh, career, his interest, and his value being advanced and uh, upheld and, uh, uh, and, and honored, okay? So, uh, therefore, when we pray, we should deal with the worship and praying for God first. First, be grateful that He is our Father, then you care and pray for God's name, kingdom, and will. Because in, if you focus on God's honor, interest, and desire, you will not be that easy to fall under the three temptations, pride, greed, and flesh. Okay, So that is to love God, the second issue of correct attitude in prayer. Okay, you need to believe and you need to love. Now the third issue is to trust. You need to trust God. You need to know that God knows our need. You need to know that God will give and He will fulfill our need in His good time, which is also our good time. Okay? We almost want everything now and we can take control, and we think our decision is the best decision for us. Okay? Have you seen that uh, the, the, the lottery winners? They have two options, usually many years of um, incremental giving to them, or once, and they pay a lot of tax. <laughs> if they take many years, they actually pay a lot less tax. But what do most people take? They take once, and pay the tax, you know, and almost 50% of them, and they think they have control for the rest. However, <laughs> that is not the wise one. Well, to make, to play lottery is not a wise one in the, be in, in the first place. But I'm just taking that as an example. When we want things, we want it to be in our hands. We take control. But you know what? If you take everything into your hands, your hands are closed. We can't receive gifts from God. <laughs> and your Control takes a lot of efforts and a lot of worry. You know, poor people worry about tomorrow's bread, but rich people worry about um, where their money will go. Can it increase? They worry every day who's going to store it, you know, and who's going to um, keep it. So it's going to, money itself does not bring happiness, okay? And uh, you uh, when you pray for your need, you trust that God knows your need, and He will give you in, your, in His good time. And uh, when you have that trust, you will have peace. And that's the fourth issue, peace. Okay? That He will give us when we really need it. 
Okay. A lot of time we want to accumulate things before we really need it. And I think everybody is, uh, <laughs> is vulnerable. Okay. And uh, I tend to accumulate books before I could have time to read them. I think, okay, that's something I'm interested in, and here's a time I paid attention to it. Let me get it so I can read it. Well, guess what? The, the interest goes and according to the flow of time, of events. So there are a lot of books, but once I get it, I never have a chance to read it because I put it on back burner. And uh, maybe I'll read it when I retire, but who knows? You know, a minister never retires, so maybe I'll never be able. Again, peace is to trust, is based on trust, that you know that God will give us when we really need it. So there may be times that we think we need it, but we don't. So we just have to trust in God and have peace with not having everything we think we must have in order to do things. Because, you know, situation change and uh, Things you think you need when you think you really need it, actually the situation is different, uh, you might not need it. Okay? And uh, God will give you what you actually need. And that is uh, the fourth uh, correct attitude in prayer. You need to believe, you need to love, you need to trust, and you need to have peace. Okay? And uh, um, this will, I think, um, um, lay the foundation for us to be able to pray for our daily bread. Okay. Now, what happens when you really want something and you're waiting for God to give you and He doesn't? Should we persist in prayer? That's the next question. In the Bible, uh, there, it seems to be, there seems to be a tension. You know, um, if we really trust in God, shouldn't we just pray once and leave it to God and He will give in time? That takes a lot of faith, but that's one attitude. That's one way of dealing with it. But on the other hand, the Bible does give us examples of never ceasing in prayer, of um, uh, persisting in prayer, and uh, and there, are, there is an example in Luke 18.1. Uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, now he was telling them a parable sh to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart, saying, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection, otherwise by continu continually coming she will wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the uh, righteous, unrighteous judge said. Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night, and will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Okay. So God, Jesus is not saying that you should pest God and he will lose heart. No, he's saying that if if the bad people might uh, lose heart and uh, give the persisting um, petitioner what she desires, shouldn't God who knows your desire give what you actually need? So the principle is that we should per per um, persevere in prayer as an act of faith. You keep on pray because you believe. Okay, and uh, we do so because we trust in God's justice and mercy, because He is both just and merciful. So He will do both. He will give justice and give mercy in His good time. We trust in Him, so we keep on praying to get these things. Mm, you pray for these things because you know that God 
has these things, and he will do them. And we should not repeat words as the pagans do. Uh, use God gave us a free will, and God gave us a free mind. Use that. Use different ways and uh, to express your heart. And we understand God considers all and has his timing. He does not just answer to us, he answers to all believers, and he has his timing, he knows what's best. And we should remove our own barriers for blessing as we persist in prayer. So persistence in prayer is good, because you, if you really know how your prayers could be answered, you know that you should not have sin as a barrier. So to persist in prayer reminds us to keep our lives holy, remove our sin barriers so that we might receive the desired result. So that's why we should persist in prayer. Therefore, at the end, we should pray, give us this day our daily bread. And uh, that is legitimate, and if we have right attitude, and uh, it is um, something that God will definitely hear and answer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Dear viewers, it has been an amazing journey of faith for me and many of you to see how God works with the Truth For Today TV ministry. God put us in the situation to depend on Him, not ourselves, and He proved again and again that He is present in the lives of His servants to provide, to lead, and to mold. Remember how the journey began? For over 50 years, Aberdeen Bible Church has produced the Truth For Today TV ministry as a service for the people at home on Sunday morning for various reasons. It was a free gift by the financial support of the church members. Last September, after a budget review, the leadership of Aberdeen Bible Church decided to ask the TV viewers whether we should put the program on the internet for cost saving and perhaps expansion to a new audience. You responded overwhelmingly that we should keep it on both medias, the air and the internet. Then we asked you to make the TV ministry your own by giving financial support. God again proved, moved your heart, and today, in less than half a year, we have received over three quarters of the annual amount necessary for purchasing the time slot from the TV station. Your gift has confirmed God's will to us. We will continue to provide the best program we can make, and I pray that you will continue to respond to God's call in giving and writing support to this ministry. We are members of one universal body of Christ, and we need one another. The existence and continuation of this ministry will become a song of praise for God once we realize that God is the one who provides us all to provide for one another. May God continue to bless us all with faith and love. Amen.